After securing the title in 1971 and coming close again in 1975, it would be another 20 years before Burr lifted the Sean Robbins Cup. Emigration remained a prominent theme throughout the 70s and 80s. While no senior title arrived in Burr in the period 1971 to 1991, the club's only junior title was secured in 1985. It proved a glorious period at underage level in the town, both in the club and the schools. In 1986, under the guidance of Brother Dennis and Porrick Horan, and captained by Michael Hogan, St Brendan's Community School won the Hogan Cup as they were crowned All-Ireland's College's Senior A Hurling Champions. St Brendan's backbone, the All-Ireland winning Offaly minor teams of 86, 87 and 89. And in 1998, 15 of the panel which secured Offaly's last All-Ireland title were past pupils of St Brendan's. In 1991, Burr regained the Senior Hurling Championship title, defeating Clarine, and were to embark on the most successful period in the club's history, adding the Leinster club title later that year, defeating Kilkenny's Ballyhale Shamrocks. They continued to an All-Ireland club final where, in their first appearance, they were defeated by Kiltormer of Galway. Between 1991 and 2008, Burr would go on to win 12 county titles, seven Leinster Senior Club titles and four All-Ireland Senior Club titles. Let us hear from the only Tipperary member of the successful 1979-1980 Presentation Brothers team, who subsequently coached this 1991 team in conversation with team member Dahi Regan. Uh, that was quite a scary day, uh, meeting Brother Dennis for the first time, enrolling into Presentation College Borough, a very famous college. And, you know, my father, of course, being my father, he had me wound up before we went in, you know, you're going to meet a great Cork man here now. Uh, Liz for hurling, he's going to be interviewing you now, you know, as to your prowess as a hurler. We started off our hurling education under Brother Cronin. Brother Cronin, a fantastic coach. Uh, the biggest memory I have from Presentation College Borough particularly is the Brothers Field. The Brothers Field uh, behind the County Arms in Borough. Huge memories of that field. Even, uh, you know, I've done a few warm-up sessions with a few of the teams over the years and the hair still stands on my head because of the fact I go in there. The greatest games I ever played were in there. But uh, fantastic memories, something I would all, always cherish. And to be on teams that won juvenile Leinster championships and then, you know, to go on to the senior team and win the first ever Leinster A championship in 1979. You know, I was the only tip man. There was 14, 14 Offaly lads and myself. Um, probably, you know, probably some of the greatest days of my life. And I suppose the, the thing in the back of my head is uh, the entrance of, a, of, a, of a, an Offaly hero you know, as a teacher in the school, a woodwork teacher, and that's Parry Corn. So, you know, there were some great men there, Michael Queeley, you know, a fantastic interest in Hurling and Clare men, you know, to his fingertips, and, you know, uh, the late Jimmy O'Neill. And Brother Dennis, that was it, it was Hurling, and that was it, and we, we, it's, it's so missed now in the community school, and we were blessed then when Parry came in and took it on. Firstly, he had this, the aura about him, about an All-Ireland winning captain, and you looked up to him, and we looked up to him, and he was a very, very passionate man. So, as a young fella in school, you got the skills from Brother Vincent. And Paulie Corn should never be underestimated in the Borough Club for what he brought to the Borough players and to the, to, to the guys that he coached at an underage. He brought a bit of steel to you. You know, if you had an injury, you broke a finger or something like that, there was no such thing as I'm out for six weeks with Paulie Corn. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, you're grand. We got beaten by North Mon in 85 after a replay in the All Ireland. We, we drew with them in Port Leash and thought we had a med. You know, we drew with North Mon. That, that was, mm. they murdered us down in Limerick. So I always remember Lord of Mercy and Benny Dwyer, Victor Dunn, Gary Cahill, myself. I think there was five of us. 
we'd all got rubbish leaving certs anyway so we kind of <laughs> said we've made a pact we'll all repeat together and we listen before we finish it was a holy grail for Brother Dennis to win the lads have been unlucky previous to that so a little bit like that I'd go and meet Brother Dennis and I sat down with him and he said now don't think you're just coming back for the hurling I went absolutely not brother you know I want to get a good leaving cert you know he says but the hurling is important you know and I says I know that brother as well and whatever way he asked me the question about my age or date of birth I misunderstood him and I gave the age that would have given me for being overage for the championship and he said what and I went oh no sorry brother I'm actually it's whatever way it was mixed up and he realised then I was going to be underage so straight away he went hurling is vital to this school you know so we knew straight away but <laughs> and it was amazing the first time we played was in Leash and there was a lot of inter-club rivalry at the time between Burr and Rhinus huge inter-club rivalry from the time we were 12 years of age without demeaning any other club I can only ever remember playing Rhinus because every year we played them in every A final 12s, 14s, 16s, minors, under 21s I never recollect playing against another club from 12s to 21s in a county final except Rhinus so the first day he got us in, in, in Boris and Ossery, like Michael Dignan and Ryan Mannion and Peter and Allen and Alan Kelly and these guys to us were sworn enemies absolutely there would have been no conversation there would have been a very deep bitterness at a young age ingrained by certain individuals in both clubs you know who were dyed in the wool bore and you hate the rhinus and you hate bore and that type of thing but Padjo got us into the dressing room the first day we sat down and I always remember he says to Michael Dignan get out of there get over there you're sitting beside Dottie Regan Ryan Mannion get out of there you're sitting beside Gary Cattle Damien Gagan you're sitting beside Alan Kelly and that was it and that's the way he started and we've lifelong friends ever since to soldier the whole way through and we've had great battles up the years but inherently between Burr and Rhinus there's always a great respect We won our first county championships in 1971 um, ter terrific final the Rhinus obviously bogey was put to rest in the semi-final uh, which was a tremendous semi-final I remember it well and uh, we got through but we had one hell of a battle against Clarine in that uh, 91 final and of course Paddy Kerwin came up with the, the, the 70 or the 65 as we call it now the, the final score of the game on a very wet day again but uh, the atmosphere in Borough was unbelievable that day I, I'll never forget the crowd coming in on the pitch and you know this is one of the reasons that we, we would love to see Borough as the, as the fulcrum of Offaly Hurling again particularly you know in the Hurling scene because fantastic atmosphere tremendous games players like Matt Finan and uh, Paul Murphy came to the fore and contributed hugely of course to the success of the Borough Hurling team they needed that bit of experience. You needed that sort of Absolutely, bit of steel. Yeah. And Paul Murphy provided that and Matt provided it. But there was a number of players in, in that category. Louis Vaughan was there and he was always involved and a great club man, you know. And particularly for that Leinster club final, um, it was an 11th hour sort of uh, change. Final. Famous semi-final <laughs> against Buffers Alley. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's, that was a, another day when Dottie met fire with fire. Buffers Alley had won the All-Ireland Club Championship in 89. A hugely experienced team. We met him over in Nolan Park. G a great game of hurling, but it was doggy dog. Yeah. Tony Dorn, Tom Dempsey, all those guys, the butlers, and they would not give an inch. And there was warfare at half time. We walked in, and Tony Dorn was trying to intimidate the referee. And I came in and I said, Now, Tony, I said, You know, you look after your own job. And there was helter skelter, and we stood eyeball to eyeball. And uh, we met up afterwards, after the game, in fairness, the buffers said, You couldn't meet better. Dotty fought on his knees, ended up unfortunately getting the line. We got to the All Ireland Club final that year, and unfortunately we lost to Adrian Cahill along the way. But uh, we were beaten by Kiltomer, who had come through a three-game struggle with Cashel. And I remember we, you know, we beat Cushendall. We had a fantastic win above, you know, in the Glens. Beat Cushendall. We came back out to the coach. That time there was no mobile phones or no fast way of finding out what how how games went. And uh, I remember uh, and Crow the match in, fin, finished in a draw in Dublin. The one great memory I have of the Holland Club final was Gary Cat at left half back. It was fantastic. And, you know, I remember the lad saying to me after the game, it was worth the admission price alone to come in and see him score the two points he scored from, from left half back. The one memory I have of Dahi is, you know, down to Hogan's and God rest Noel Hogan's father. You know, he was a great man and we lifted Noel's shoulder high into the pub and the pride, the pride in his father's face, I'll never forget it, you know, walking in there. So I suppose... You know, memories are made of things like that, you know. 1990 was critical and it was a learning curve for Burr. And they really gave St. Ryan a socks of it in the final. Um, and I always remember Mick Hogan 
was playing full back Mark and Keneally and of course Keneally had a reputation as being a hard man and I can remember at one stage in the second half the ball in around the square and instead of Mickey in around the square protecting it he was over near the sideline walking Keneally Michal over to the sideline with the hurl under his chin and I never forget it that Michal just you don't want to mess with Miko to be honest with you as tough <laughs> as you are you don't mess with Miko and one thing that always struck me and, and I always, always remember about Kim was in 93 when he lost an All-Ireland semi-final to Galway and you would have that right, moment in the right. first half we were training the following night and I can remember there was a poor turnout of training and there was a poor turnout of training on the basis that well, we don't have to worry about it the selectors will be taking it tonight Tippett just lost an All-Ireland semi-final Ken isn't going to be in the best of form listen we know he's not going to be here tonight the Tip lads will all be together and he was the first man in the field and that to us showed us the professionalism now you weren't in great form when he came in <laughs> and you, he was in worse form when he seen the turnout that was there so he absolutely grueled it but it, it's, it spoke volumes of you know exactly what managing a team meant to Ken like very very professional man in training the team we've seen that then subsequently over the years so we were very blessed that we had a young bunch of players but at the time we were actually going nowhere until Ken came in. Subsequently, of course, Pori Corn came in. And again, no more than that, Pori Corn probably never got the accolades because of the subsequent successes and the back to back. Pori Corn was a real winner when he came in. Very different to Ken in his mythology, is how he trained the team and that. And probably a lot more gruffer and, you know, rougher and tougher in his mannerisms and the whole thing. But again, in his own way, he commanded respect. The best feeling I ever had in my life when the final whistle went was 1998 when we won a club all Ireland. Nothing ever came close to it. I was so emotional coming into it after Tom Errity had died in the semi-final. And I give great credit to Padjo Whelan for what he'd done or for actually what he didn't do in the dressing room beforehand. It was, it was a very emotionally charged week leading up to the game. Joe was captain, but I was never